Today we're going to transform into Megan Fox, and this video is sponsored by Overtone and Coachella. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I turned this plain blonde 613 wig, it was about $60 off of Amazon, into a Megan Fox lookalike. For some reason, my first video recording this intro disappeared, so we're going to do a little bit of a voiceover and sort of fast forward to where we're going. So the very first thing I did was I took a very plain blonde wig. Always shampoo your extensions or your wigs because sometimes they have preservatives on them for the shipping process. So always wash them before you wear them. And I ended up using a really good purple shampoo. I will show you guys the actual shampoo that I used. So I always wash it two or three times and give it a little purple shampoo with conditioner, let it air dry overnight. And now we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the video of where it left off. Okay, I am back with the wig. She is not dry, but that's okay. This, hopefully you can tell the difference between what it was before and now. Now, if I was wearing this just straight blonde, I probably would have done like a bleach bath or a light bleach wash on this before I pre-toned her. But like I said, the blonde isn't really gonna be peeking through. So, but this looks great. This is exactly what I, I want it to look like. It looks brighter, it doesn't look as yellow, and that's where we're gonna be. So she's pretty much towel dried at this point, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I have a mannequin head here, and I'm going to take a shopping bag to place over the mannequin head first. I'm just gonna take a scrunchie to tie the bag. This is to protect the mannequin head from the hair color. It'll probably leak through a little bit through the lace itself. And I'm gonna do the roots first. Now, if this is damp like this, it's not totally wet, it's not dripping wet, it's just a little damp, you can still do the hair color, it won't affect it. Although I am going to do the roots first because I want them to be very defined. Because if you look at Megan Fox, her hair is very much new growth, regrowth that's out. I want this to look very defined. I don't want it to be like a root melt or blended. The hair color I'm gonna be using is Wella. That's the only hair color that I use even on myself. So this is five stroke zero. It is a very natural, neutral base. Honestly, I was looking at Megan Fox's hair and her base could be even darker than this. It could be a three or a four, but I felt safer going at about a five. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna need this whole tube because we're only doing like an inch and a half inch of outgrowth. So I think I'm gonna use about one ounce, one and a half ounces of hair color. And I'm using just regular 20 volume for this. This I did purchase at Cosmoprof, and I don't think you can access it unless you are a stylist. You might be able to find it on Amazon, but I didn't, I didn't tell you that, okay? So I'm just gonna mix this up till it combines. As a general rule of thumb, I never use more or higher than 20 volume. Personal preference, I've talked about this before even if you have the blackest of black hair, and I have very dark hair because I'm indigenous, and even to lift my hair, which is like a level three, I only use volume 20 or 10 volume. I can still get lift with a good bleach powder. I use Blondor by Wella, I've talked about that before. So you really have to mix this. I probably should have got my little um, mixing brush that looks like a whisk but I did not grab that. I'll show you when this application is complete about where I stopped as far as like the line of demarcation goes. Like I said looking at Megan Fox she had about a inch to an inch and a half maybe even a little bit more of regrowth. So I'm going to eyeball it. 
So I'm very, very, very precise when I'm doing something like this. In fact, I'm gonna stand up. I will show you this when I'm done, but I'm just going to apply this to the root. And I do want it to look a little bit as if it was regrowth just coming out. Okay, it has been about 35 minutes and I am happy with the way the roots look right now. So we are gonna go shampoo and condition her right now. So I'll be back. Okay, she is washed. I'm gonna be real, I probably could have gone one or two shades darker. So I used a level five. If you do this at home, you could honestly do like a level four or even a three, because I think Megan Fox's hair, her natural hair is so dark, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not gonna go over it, this is fine. So now I have it a little bit damp. It's not, um, it's not like dripping wet, but I first, I don't know, this is controversial, but as a stylist, when I'm applying Vivids, I think that you end up with a better result when the hair is a little bit damp. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the mannequin. I have a fresh baggie on the mannequin head so that I don't get pink dye on the mannequin head. And she's brushed out. And now I'm going to show you guys how I mix up this pink hair color to match. Now <clears throat> you could, I guess if you're at home and you're mutating colors like I am, I would suggest using like a paper towel to paint on, you know, the color if you're testing different colors. I'm not going to do that just because I already know the color that I'm going for since I've, I used to have pink hair and I know exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to dry out this bowl. I'm going to take a pretty decent amount of this conditioning color, probably about that much, and I'm going to put it in the bowl. Might even add just a little bit more. I can definitely tell this is still a little bit too vibrant. So what I'm going to do is take a conditioner. It doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just using an argon oil that I got from TikTok Shop and PR. And I'm just going to add a bunch of conditioner. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And I need to mix that with the white conditioner. Not quite equal parts. I would say a fourth, to, fourth of the amount of the pink that I put in. And now I'm going to mix it. Definitely needs to be like a white conditioner though because that's what's going to dilute the pink color since it is a conditioner. Okay, to do a bleach bath, I, you need a mixing bowl like from the kitchen. So I'm using this plastic one. I'm gonna use 20 volume here and I'm going to use Blondor by Wella. It's the only bleach that I use. And then we're gonna mix it with some warm water and a little bit of shampoo. Okay, to do a bleach bath, I'm using a big bowl. It's like a mixing bowl. This is the only hair color. This is the only bleach that I use. I'm going to use 20 volume developer mixed with shampoo and warm water. Okay, so we have her soaking in here. Notice how I do not have bleach on the roots, okay? And we're not really bleaching this to make it blonde. We're bleaching this just to open up that top layer of cuticle so that we can add more pink pigment inside of that, right? So we don't need to let this sit for a typical bleach of like 45 minutes. It needs to sit for maybe 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna watch it and I'll let you know. I really think maybe I need to dar darken up these roots this is a level five and it just does not look as dark as Megan Fox. So I think I'm gonna have to go pick up a level three in. I'll probably do that. Okay, I ran and I picked up a level three in, which is much darker than what we used before, which is a five. So I went from a five in to a three in for the root. And then I went ahead and melted in this after. This is the Olaplex um, pastel pink. Okay, what a mess I made with hair color, it's all right. And um, now we're gonna let it sit for a while. But you can already tell how much the hair is absorbing the pink so much better than before with the bleach bath. It just kind of irritated that cuticle. And that was what we needed to just sort of irritate that cuticle. 
so that it would reabsorb these molecules. I can't wait to see how it comes out. We're back. It's actually a couple of days later. <laughs> this was a lot of work, actually. So we have the wig and she is complete and I think it's pretty much spot on. So I had to make a couple adjustments. I'm gonna be real, I used a three in on this root and I think it could have been darker, which is crazy. I'm indigenous, my natural hair color is like probably between like a three and a two. It's very black. And I think Megan Fox is the same. So I should have gone even darker. So if you do this at home, you really need to do like a level one or a two. A three is not dark enough, but we're not gonna do it again. I am still satisfied with the way that it came out. This is what the hair looks like air dried. And I really think that to install it, we need to style it while it's on. So I wanted to show you guys, I did go ahead and cut the front lace off, okay? I'm gonna put this on the dark side of my screen. Do you see how jagged I cut the lace? That is how you want to cut the lace because if you cut the lace straight clean across, it's gonna look funny because nobody's hairline is perfectly straight, right? So make sure, and I just realized there's lace in the back that I need to trim too, so I'll go ahead and do that on camera. I might still, when you when you install a lace wig, so right now I have, I have extensions in my hair, but I did do as flat as possible as I could, um, like, French braids and then I pinned them up and then I'm gonna add a wig cap but you really need to make your hair as flat as possible so I'm gonna show you guys how I trim this so I'm just gonna take some manicuring scissors and I'm gonna go up and down just make sure it's really jagged you don't want you don't want really any of the lace showing at all to be honest and the reason they have lace in the back of this wig is in case you wear it up I'm not planning on wearing it up but I also don't want this huge piece of lace flopping around in the back of my head either. So make sure you trim the lace. It's easier, for, in my opinion, to trim it before you install it. I'm really excited about this, honestly. I'm really thrilled about this. So I'm gonna go, it does have straps in this one. I will link the wig below. I got this off of Amazon, so I'll put it in the link below. <clears throat> it was just an 18 inch. So this is the wig. So I need to first go grab a wig cap. I'm gonna put that on and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have this like fishnet wig net on, okay, wig cap. And the reason is, is the nylon ones make my head itch, man. I don't know. So now I'm going to put in bobby pins, probably like six to eight. And what I do is I will crisscross them because um, do you see where these combs are? These combs will fit perfectly underneath those crisscrosses and it just gives you a little bit more sturdy secureness, you know, when you're out in public. This is gonna be installed for me pretty much all day and I don't want to um, feel like it's gonna fly off. I'm gonna do another one up top. Now be careful though when you're installing these bobby pins because if you install them too tight in the crisscross, it will hurt your head. And even there, I don't think, because I have so many extensions in, I have weft hair extensions in and fusion extensions. I have a blend, and so I'm not going to even add those right now because that I can already tell it's not going to be comfortable. And then I think I'm just going to add two crisscrosses in the back. But really make sure you feel these bobby pins out wear them alone for a minute by themselves without the wig on because if you're you know in pain and this wig is installed it's not going anywhere so and you don't want it you know glue this wig down and then un it's just that's a process so i always recommend wearing the bobby pins for a few minutes making sure it's not causing a headache or hurting they don't need to be replaced somehow i'm just going to reference where Megan Fox has her part. It's honestly just kind of a messy middle part is what she has. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this square on. I always go forehead first. First, make sure your combs are in where they need to be. Tuck in any hair that's sticking out. You can see my blonde hair in a couple of spots. Now you kinda need to decide where you want this hairline to fall. Now this is a front lace wig. So I'm really hoping I can kind of do it more of a middle part like she has. She actually has more of like a, a messy 
middle part. Not necessarily zigzagged, but it's like a little bit off on the side. I don't know. I honestly think I'm going to keep a little half part right here for me. So now what I'm going to do is pull just this top layer back and put it in a clip. Okay. Now I need to really examine. This is what you do with a lace front wig. You need to really examine where all this lace is sitting. If there's anything extra that you need to trim off. I know it looks kind of crazy right now. Just bear with me. So on this side, I can tell that it is covering my ear a little bit and you do not want to walk around with your ear being covered all day. It will hurt eventually. So I'm, it's going to seem scary, but I literally took this chunk out so that my ear can be exposed because it will, you cannot walk around like that all day with your ear being covered. It will feel weird. So I'm pretty okay with this. It definitely needs some concealer on the lace to sort of hide some of this lace. I actually think I'm going to trim a little bit of this lace out of here. Be careful you don't cut your own hair either. You don't want to do that. You don't want that lace to look perfect. Just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks for now. So we need to glue the lace down next. So there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to take this got to be, this is really stiff, hardcore hairspray. And I'm going to just spray the little outer line, just lift the lace up. Now what I need to do is go hair dry it for a second so that it gets tacky. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that it's dried with the hair dryer, it's tacky. You're going to take a wig grip band. And I'm going to look like Axl Rose. Now I'm going to let that sit now for a few minutes and really let that lace and glue melt together. You might have to repeat this process up to five times depending on how the lace looks each time. I don't do baby hairs. I know that's culturally appropriate, but I don't think they look good. I don't think it looks natural. Some people just do it to hide the lace. If the lace is hanging out that bad, you need to cut it further back into the hairline. That's my opinion. So I'm just going to keep doing this process till I'm done and then I'll be back. So I'm taking this off to test it to see how it looks. Once again, we're going to have to wet all this mane down, but now we have to look to see is anything sticking out? Is anything not sticking? This piece is still up. So this is what I said when you sometimes have to repeat this process a few times. Sometimes only certain areas of the wig stick and that's very normal. So now I'm going to go dry this again and then repeat the process. I feel like I look like I stepped out of like 1984 before I was born. Hey. Shook me all night long. Dun -dun -dun. like Axl Rose playing or something. Poison. Yeah, poison. Don't lift this band up till you know it's dry. Like right now, I can tell you right now, I can still feel that the glue from the hairspray is a little wet. So just be patient. Get up, walk away. You know what I mean? Okay, next thing I'm going to do before I wet this down is I'm going to take some concealer. I think pot concealers are the easiest, but that's just me. And I would take something that's like a really almost like hard stipple brush like this can you see it and because this is going to really push that product into the lace now if there's any lace that you kind of want to hide and you want it to look more like your skin tone just start pushing in some concealer now don't don't put too much you know what i mean you don't want it to look like makeup either this side feels a little loose still actually Definitely around the hairline is probably the biggest spot for this. We'll definitely probably have to hide this with some baby hairs. I don't do it the same way other people do. I just cut some of the lace around the edges and kind of flat iron it down so that it hides it. Next thing I'm going to do is really decide where this part's going to be. 
I think I want it to be a little bit on this side. Yeah. Megan Fox's is more in the middle, but I think I want something like this. I'm going to take this clip and just clip this down. And now I'm going to take some more concealer on the areas of where this lace is. And if, if you get it on your hair, it's fine. Just use your hand to mix it up a little bit more. I'm gonna go a little further back just in case it's visible. So yeah, that's much better. It looks a lot more blended. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some sections around the front of the hair line. This wig actually already came with some baby hairs. So I'm going to take hair along the edges and basically when you trim this it is to help hide the lace a little bit okay trust the process I only have manicuring scissors I'm going to take a razor this is an eyebrow razor I know this is gonna feel like a lot of hair but I promise it's not that bad we all have baby hairs so just think of it like that it's like those really delicate baby hairs around your face and you need some to make it look more natural okay I know it's gonna feel scary cutting this big chunk off but I always do this on all of my wigs it's gonna feel wrong and it's gonna feel scary but trust me trust me okay now I am happy with that for sure now we really need to sort of wet this hair down we need to get this mane in control so this is an 18 inch human hair wig. And we might end up having to trim some of these baby hairs shorter later, but as long as we've got, you know, got it rolling right now, we're good. So these are the products that I'm gonna use right now. So I, the reason there's so much volume with this wig right now is because I literally dr hang dried it upside down overnight, okay? And that was because I really wanted it to be air dried. I didn't want the pastel pink to be compromised, okay? So we need to just kind of get her, get her under control. I'm going to roll up my sleeves. So I'm going to use a couple of different things. Beach Babe Sea Salt Spray. I love this brand, Not Your Mother's. It's so good. You can get it at Ulta and sometimes at Walmart. So I'm going to use this because this will help give me more texture back into it when I go in. This is the number one thing we need is the curl cream. That's going to really define those twists that she had in her hair. But I also think I'm going to control it with this soft touch holdable mousse. This came in like a three pack and then there's also a sculpting gel. I don't know if I'm going to use much of the gel to be honest with you because I don't want it to be hard. I, her curls look, yes, wet but also soft. So I think we're going to stick with these two products. So first I'm going to go through, I'm looking in the mirror, making sure I want to make sure I keep this part, right? Because I really like where this part is. Now her hair isn't like totally soaked, it's just mimicking the look of, you know, she's this siren goddess that just stepped out of the water essentially. So you don't want it like dripping wet. We just want to get it under control and tamed, which might take a few minutes. The sides and separate those. And then in the back, I think most of her twists so she has twists just kind of going every direction. But I'm gonna do these in sections because I don't want the hair to get dry. So I'm gonna start with this section about this size in the back. And first we're gonna wet this down. Once again, it doesn't need to be like dripping wet. It just needs to have that wet look and enough softness in the hair that it's flexible for us to be able to do the twists. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of mousse. I don't wanna do too much because I, once again, I don't want it crunchy. I just want it to be formed. And then the most important part is the curl cream. 
So this is really what's going to give it that definition and it's going to make it look wet and stay sort of that look. She doesn't have super massive twists. So really they're just taking a section like this at a time and they're twisting it. And then they're doing another one. They're probably doing every other one a different direction is what I would assume. They're not rope braids, they're just twists, if you look at the pictures and the, vo the videos of her. So it's not really that complicated, it's just time consuming. And really that's it, and you just repeat that. Okay, so I have one more section left, okay? Now I'm, no I'm looking at the monitor right now. I did this whole front section with just curl cream. So obviously I've never done this before, right? And I didn't know how it was gonna go. But if I could go back and redo this, I would not use mousse, just as a heads up. Because the mousse is starting to make these back pieces a little bit more crunchy. It did hold like its shape and all that stuff. But I think that the curl cream makes it look a little bit more on like the soft side, if that makes sense. Um, and like the heavy, wet, I just got out of the ocean type of vibe. So if I could do this over again, or if I, if I ever style this again, I will definitely just use curl cream. In fact, I might try to even find a heavier curl cream, but this front section looks exactly like hers. So I'm gonna do this the same way. So what I'm doing is I am wetting this down first. You really don't want a whole lot of volume at all. The sea salt mist I do think works. So I will, I will definitely continue to use that on the next go around. Then I take curl cream and I mean, I really get it in there all over. Okay. All over, really apply it even in that root. Okay. Then we're going to separate this and we're going to do small sections again. But this time what I do is I will take curl cream on my fingertips and I will separate, it's very like how you do dreads or box braids, and I will use curl cream on the, literally each section. So that kind of takes some time, but that came out so good on the other side. So I will just do that. Sometimes you can kind of just let these pieces fall the way that they naturally fall and that's the direction you're going to twist them in and I do different um, sizes too makes it look a little bit better with different sizes so some are a little bit bigger some are smaller and you just do that going up and I found out that is the best way you can get this done honestly once I got this down to a rhythm it actually went pretty smooth pretty fast I just really like the way the curl cream looks, especially when you're adding it with each individual section. It just looks heavier and softer. Can you tell though? Like look how dry this looks in the back from using the mousse, but that's okay. That's okay. Hydrate those puppies back up for the photos, you know what I'm saying? Next time around, curl cream only. I think it came out so good. I'm obsessed with it. Of course, you guys know that your support means the world to me. Make sure you leave me comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, make sure you're following me on TikTok. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Would you go for this crazy look? I think it's amazing. I feel like a mermaid and uh, I'm obsessed with it. Once again, curl cream is your best friend. Another shout out to Overtone. <laughs> my the bottle is like just mutilated for allowing me to um, collaborate with them and Coachella for this. this. is so cool. If you get to go to Coachella this year, 2024, and see No Doubt, I am so jealous of you. I would give anything to go see No Doubt. This is a competition, and if I win with Overtone, um, they actually might take me to Coachella to see No Doubt. So if anything you can do to boost this will help me like it, share it, save it, send it, doesn't matter, comment on it. And uh, what do you guys think? I think I slayed Megan Fox.